people move to co-housing communities because they want to live in community with one another. The reciprocity, you know, the doing for each other, helping each other out, just made life easier for everybody. I think the basic concept that we can live a richer life by sharing things than each living independently just makes a lot of sense. Located on seven acres of land just south of Benton Hill Park sits Prairie Hill Co-Housing. What is now Iowa City's first co-housing community began with a group of people looking for a new way of living. So we started out with the concept of a place where people could age in place and realized that really there were no models out there that were close to what we were thinking of and came across the concept of co-housing on the internet. Co-housing is often confused with other housing models. Although we share many things, we also own our own homes and, um, and don't share finances. So there's no shared economy, there's no, no central doctrine, and the common misconception is that it's a commune or a co-op, when in reality the legal structure is a homeowners association. After years of research, discussions, and field trips, the core group of the community found this land and began working with architects to design a blueprint that fit their needs, including a smaller carbon footprint. From the start, we wanted energy efficient homes. Being smaller units makes it more energy efficient, but the walls are basically super insulated. Building new gave us the opportunity to do it right. We put together a plan that has built super insulated, all electric, solar ready homes. We are very close to net zero here, which means that we can live like we're living and not have the kind of negative impact on the earth that we were having before. In my unit last year, it was a net zero that I produced as much electricity as I consumed for my heating, cooling. A smaller living space with shared elements is a key component to the co-housing model. Co-housing started in Denmark back in the 1970s. The concept was to have people living in a community with a common house so that you could have common meals and share lots of the resources. You downsize your own individual home because the idea is you have shared indoor and outdoor spaces that you share with your community members. So we live in a two bedroom apartment that is quite a bit smaller than the home that we moved from, but we have access to a great kitchen, living room space, there's a wonderful playroom over in the common house for the children, and we live on about nine acres of land that we all work on and uh, have outdoor community events at. The common house is the nucleus of the community, buzzing with activities, meetings, and celebrations. The space also features a large kitchen and dining room. We do community uh, cooking every Tuesday night. It's called Tasty Tuesday. People sign up to cook a meal, and people sign up to help out either for the prep time or the cleanup so that the chef doesn't have to do all of it. And so my family really enjoys doing that. The concept of sharing applies to many different items, both big and small. Does everyone have to own a salad shooter? Uh, no, but there are occasions where a salad shooter might be handy or a waffle iron or an ice cream maker or whatever. And so a bunch of those things are down there and if you need one, you go down and borrow it. We have berry bushes, we have trees that are growing, we have a huge community garden and we're looking at as we continue to grow, getting to the point where we're making food and we're really being thoughtful about how does this feed not just our community but also our community around us. We have a shop in one of the garage areas and that with woodworking and other equipment and power tools in there, people can borrow what they need. The women had just built a pergola. These tasks and activities are enjoyed by residents of all ages. I would just say that as a parent, it's been invaluable. Not having family nearby, living here has been, I, I can't express how great it's been for our family. My youngest daughter is joining the knitting circle that's going to be made up of retired women and her, she's seven. Um, she's learning how to sew from one of our neighbors. They learned to play pool the other day. They're learning to play chess. Um, so it's a really wonderful thing. It's very hands-on and very enriching for them and for us. It's really 
really made for good relationships with the kids. They trust us, they like us, they know us, and they just liven things up amazingly. <laughs> and it's that sense of community that many Prairie Hill residents find the most rewarding. If you need something, you can ask a neighbor. If you need help on something, there's people around because you know them. You're more willing to ask them because you're also volunteering to help them. Where I was living before, you might see people once a year at a meeting, and that was it. You know, you didn't really know your neighbors very well. There are quite a few people here who are, who are older, and um, there have been some people who've had surgeries, and, and there's always a group of people who come together and plan for meals and plan for checking on them and plan for taking them to the hospital or wherever they need to go, doctor's offices, checkups. Um, and that's something that you don't find in every neighborhood. Once it's all completed, Prairie Hill will include 36 units. And while that limits how many people can be a part of this community, they hope their philosophies will be an example for others. It's something we as a community, I think, will move toward doing is showing things off so that people can say, oh, I could do that. I think there are a number of things that we model here that could be used in other settings. You know, one of them is the native turf. There's the energy efficiency, but there's also the social aspects. There's all the, the, the robust social connections, you know, the caring for each other. Getting to this point took countless hours of research, planning, and work, but the end results make it all worthwhile. Ah, uh, <laughs> sometimes I just stand up on top of that hill and look. Getting from there to here has been challenging, rewarding, Time consuming. Time consuming. Enormously time consuming. But am I glad I did this? Was a part of doing this? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, really fulfilling. It's been one of the most fulfilling things I've ever done.